Okay, here's our fourth lecture on the meaning of life. Uh, we're going to cover subjective naturalism. You can see the other lectures for uh, the preliminary considerations and then supernaturalism and nihilism. The focus of this lecture is Richard Taylor's uh, view. Um, and he writes an article on the meaning of life where he says that life is objectively meaningless, but you can create meaning in your life by getting to do the things that you want. So um, your life is meaningful if there is a correspondence between your desires and your activities. So you have an avid bowler and they, they just love to bowl. They want to bowl all the time. And if they get to bowl, well, that's quite meaningful. Their, their life has meaning because of the correspondence between what they want to do and what they get to do. The political activist and the humanitarian would be the same thing. Political activists, you know, going to rallies, um, uh, you know, arguing with people on social media, that sort of thing. Uh, they would, by getting to do those things, they their life is made meaningful. Though at an objective level, just the you know, like a real standard, the, their life is just completely meaningless. It's all pointless. They may as well do, you know, they may as well um, punch old ladies rather than help them across the street. And I'm not recommending violence against uh, the elderly. All right. Okay. So uh, Richard Taylor compares art like meaning, meaning in life to the life of Sisyphus. And so you have this guy, Sisyphus, who was condemned by the gods to roll a boulder up a hill. But every time he got the boulder to the top of the hill, it would roll back down. And so then he, it was his eternal punishment. He would have to go down. He would have to roll the boulder back up, and then it would roll back down. And this is meaningless. This is repetitious. It's cyclical. never comes to anything. There's no sort of culmination. It's not like he's building a temple. It, like when the boulder gets to the top of the hill, it's, it doesn't stay there. Um, his Therefore, his work is pointless and his existence is meaningless. Poor Sisyphus, at least he, uh, you know, at least he's going to get some nice abs out of it or something, you know. Um, so uh, for Taylor, if meaninglessness is endless pointlessness, like as in the life of Sisyphus, meaningfulness is the opposite. An activity has a meaning. If it has some significant culmination, some more or less lasting end that can be considered to have been the direction and the purpose of the activity. OK, so if your activity has a significant culmination, a lasting end. But this is just what the life of Sisyphus lacks. There is no culmination. Now, Richard Taylor supposes that, you know, he, he comes up with another scenario where the boulder stays and then he Sisyphus gets a different boulder, puts it up there, a different boulder, puts it up there and then makes a temple. Well, that would have some meaning that would have the culmination. But then he, you know, Taylor gives with one hand and takes away with the other. So, so what? He builds a temple. Now what does he do? He's got all of eternity and, and um, maybe he used up all the boulders and there's this nice temple, but then he's just bored at that point. But um, our lives are meaningless in the same way that the life of Sisyphus is meaningless. So Taylor says, we toil after goals, most of them, indeed every single one of them, of transitory significance. And having gained one of them, we immediately set forth for the next, as if one had never been, with this next one being essentially more of the same. Look at a busy street any day and observe the throng going hither and thither. Well, to what? Some office or shop where the same things will be done today as were done yesterday and are done now so they may be repeated tomorrow. So you go to work in order to live and you live in order to work and then like kind of like what's the point? So um, maybe you say, well, it's for the next generation. Yeah, but what you're doing is you're raising that next generation so they could do the same kind of pointless work as you. So Taylor goes on. Most such effort is directed only to the establishment and perpetuation of home and family. That is to the begetting of others who will follow in our steps to do more of the same. Everyone's life thus resembles one of Sisyphus climbs to the summit of his hill and each day one of its steps. The difference is that whereas Sisyphus himself returns to push the stone up again, we leave this to our children. So you can picture each day as a an ascent up the hill. You can picture each life, each generation as an ascent up the hill. Um, regardless, like it's all this cyclical sort of thing. You know, 
uh, what goes around comes around. Uh, well, no, that's more like uh, that's more like karma kind of thing. What goes around comes around. But uh, what I meant is sort of, you know, like the same thing is happening over and over and uh, there is no culmination, no end point. And yet Richard Taylor says, well, let's consider a modified Sisyphus story. In this modified story, the gods strike Taylor uh, with a desire to roll the rock of hill. They give him, you know, they strike him with lightning bolt or something. And now he just suddenly wants to roll boulders up the hill. Now he's so amped to roll that boulder up the hill. And he's even excited that it rolls back down. Why? Because he gets, now he gets to do it again. He gets to go roll that rock up the hill. And so for the first time, Sisyphus's activities have meaning. They're still, the activities are still objectively meaningless. There is no culmination, but from his point of view, it's all worthwhile. How does that apply to us? Well, what Richard Taylor says is that, yeah, your life is objectively meaningless, but if from your perspective you find it meaningful, that's all that matters. So let's, let's give some response to Taylor, right? Like, is there any reason for thinking that this view isn't very good? Um, so I'd ask you, you know, what seems attractive about Taylor's account? What about some objections? Okay, so I would say what seems attractive is that it allows you a sort of autonomy to live your life the way you see fit. You can determine for yourself what is good for you and what makes your life worthwhile. I think that attractiveness only goes so far because you can imagine, well, now I'm getting into objections, but you can imagine someone who uh, lives their life in a way that's harmful. Or maybe even autonomy isn't what we need. Maybe, maybe autonomy is not how humans should function. Maybe we should function as, uh, you know, sort of in society, uh, serving others, right? So maybe serving God, serving God and others. And autonomy is just going against our natural function or something like that. So let's consider some objections to Taylor's account. Uh, doing what one wants isn't sufficient for meaningfulness. So, for example, someone might want to do what's bad for them, even if they believe it's good for them. And this is a horrible example, but the excrement eater, the person who goes around eating poo, is this really meaningful? Yeah, they're getting to do what they want, but come on. How about the heroin addict? They're not just doing, you know, like something disgusting. They're doing something bad. Actually, if you go around eating poo, you're probably going to damage your health. All right, so you can watch these YouTube videos. Um, uh, they give examples of people who are getting like a thrill out of these bizarre sort of things. I mean, it's nothing weird. You can, you can watch it like someone getting a thrill out of um, getting his arm stuck in a vending machine, right? It's a direct TV commercial. Uh, B, someone might want to do activities that are worthless, even if they believe they're worthwhile. The phone book reader, the blades of grass counter. You know, this person is sitting around all day reading phone books. This is just what they want to do. But that's worthless. Like they should be out doing something like greeting people at Walmart, designing buildings or, uh, you know, becoming a doctor uh, rather than just sitting at home reading the phone book. But Taylor would say, no, that's fine. That's that's meaningful. And then see, someone might want to do something that's not only meaningless, but terrible for others. So there's this really like basic uh, obligation that most people accept that we um, shouldn't harm others for no good reason. Um, but what if people are like trying to live their lives according to harming others like Hitler or, or someone like that, like, or a mass murderer, I mean, I'm not a mass murderer, um, serial killer. Well, can we really say that that's the, that's the good life for a human being? That's a meaningful life. It doesn't seem so. So Taylor's account maybe has something going for, it. you know, maybe, happiness like right like when you get to do what you want you're happy and maybe happiness really is like part of what makes a life meaningful but it can't be the whole story okay so we'll give our final lecture now on susan wolf's objective naturalism